Okay. So yeah, my name is Yang uh, from the Search Science team. Uh, I want, I'm glad to share our research work with DSP team last year, uh, work with Jinwei, Alex, and Aero. So this is, uh, oh, this is our outline today. <clears throat> so I want to introduce our model and related works. And uh, we propose a new framework and a uh, field optimization method. And I also want to show our experiment and the result and its performance. And the last is conclusion and the question and answer. So uh, the work is major for the recommender system, especially the click-through rate solved for the CTR prediction. So it plays a key role in recommender system. Uh, for example, uh, in online advertising, news recommendation, and content distribution. It almost covers most of our business in the world of media. So there are a few popular models, like a logistic regression, short for LR. So it's a very simple model. It's only considered degree one features. That's each single feature. So it's fast, high efficiency, but the performance, I mean, the accuracy is, is low. The second one is the collaborative filtering. So it's famous because it helps the Netflix uh, to recommend the movies to users. But uh, in nowadays, it's difficult to upscale it, and uh, there is a could start issue. So the factorization machines and its varieties, like the field aware FM, uh, field weighted FM, and the offset, that I think this is the most popular model uh, nowadays. It uh, besides the single features, it's also considered the degree two feature. That's the pairwise, the, the cross feature. Um, so it can get better performance in accuracy and it's faster. But uh, some of these models, like the FFM, so they have too much parameters. So the parameter efficiency is low. The last is the DNN models, like the wide and deep, deep and cross, uh, deep FM, X deep FM, out in and deep light. These models can get the best performance, but it still it's have too much parameters. It's a risk that uh, may overfit uh, during the training, and uh, the inference speed is low. It can be only used at the final stage of the ranking, like a re-ranking stage. So uh, in our paper, we propose a new method called field matrix factorization machine, short for FM, M, FM, FM, uh, or we call it FM square. So it's, uh, it's fast and simple, and it has a uh, high computational efficiency and better performance. Okay, <clears throat> so the second part, we show our model and the framework. Uh, this diagram shows the uh, how the FM square model works. So FM, basically, FM square is an extension of field weighted factorization machine. It uses two second, uh, sorry, it uses two dimensional matrix M to interact different pairs uh, inside a scalar in the a scalar in the FWFM. So there are three steps. The first step is embedding lookup. So it's uh, similar to factorization machine. We learn only one embedding vector for each feature. Then use the table lookup to uh, for the I, uh, for the feature i. Well, at the second step, we use a transformation. So vi is multiplied uh, multiplied by matrix m, respectively, to get for multiple intermediate vectors. For example, in this case, the yellow vector embedding vi was transferred to uh, embedding uh, transferred to intermediate vector vi to field j, and it, uh, for the blue vector and the purple vector vi for field k. So the last step is dot product. So it's a very simple dot product between intermediate, vec uh, intermediate vectors and the other feature vector. For example, in the left side, the green vector Vj dot product with Vi for field J. On the right side, the pink and the uh, purple, the v Vk dot product with Vi for field K. So it's a, the FM square is very similar to uh, the original FM. So uh, since slide, we want to use the three-step framework to uh, explain the FM and with a better understanding, <coughs> we can understand FM better. So in the original representation machine, actually it escapes the transformation part, that's the second part. It uses the shared embedding VI to do the final product with the VI and VK. In this case, uh, so we can construct a, a matrix to, uh, to let it fit the three step, uh, fit the second step, the transformation. So we, it's easy to know that this matrix must be an uh, identity matrix. Let's say all these field matrix must be identity, ident identity matrix. So we know that this matrix can't be trained. There are no trainable parameters in this field matrix. So we define the degree of freedom is zero. So next, we want to use the, uh, this framework to explain the FWFM, uh, 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 which is the field weighted factorization machine. So uh, in this case, the field matrix is a scalar matrix, which the diagram is all uh, a scalar R. So the degree of freedom is the one because there's only trainable parameter in the field matrix is the scalar R. So if we follow the clue above, we can give one more degree of freedom to the matrix and let it be a diagonal matrix D. So we name this method uh, field vectorized factorization machine, uh, short for FVFM. So uh, the, uh, until here, we know that FM, FWFM, and FVFM are all special cases of FM square. So their only difference are their matrix uh, degree of freedom. So the so for the original uh, factorization machine, the field interaction are constant. So the degree of freedom is zero. Well, the FWFM is scalar, the degree of freedom is one. FVFM is vector, and the degree of freedom is two. Well, the FM square is a full matrix. So the degree, it has the most degree of freedom, which is three. 
So next, uh, we explain the relationship between the field-aware factorization machine and the, and the FM square model. So F, uh, field-aware factorization machine can't be reformed into the FM, FM square model's three-step framework because it has a different way to look at the embeddings. FM's, uh, FFM never shares the feature embeddings. There are n minus one embeddings for the one single feature where n is number of fields. So they, are, uh, they have a huge number of parameters, so it has more memories in the FFM. But uh, there is a risk that uh, FFM may uh, get overfitting during the training. Uh, it's because of the unbalance of the feature. For example, in this diagram, we show the FFM, the VI, the feature VI and the VG is a high frequency combination in the training data set, where the feature VI and the VK is low frequency. See, possibly it never appears in the training data. However, uh, because the feature VI for field G, that's the yellow, the yellow vector, and the future, uh, the future embedding VI for field K are two independent embeddings, even the, uh, it to describe the same feature, but it's for two different fields. So the embedding VI may learn well, while the, embed, uh, sorry, the yellow one embedding VI for field G may learn well, but the purple one, the embedding VI for field K not. So FM, FM square solved this, this issue. Because they use uh, metrics to learn the uh, learn the, these patterns, so it can be project one embedding vector into another n minus one field, and this pattern can be learned in the uh, in the matrix. So they have more capability in the inference inside of memory. As this is the basic difference, uh, fundamental difference between the FFM and the FM square. <clears throat> so the part three, we uh, introduce a, a field uh, optimization method. The first is the field specific dimensions. So all other uh, factorization machine models require the vector dimension of k of all embedding the same. This is because we in, uh, because we have to make the dot product uh, in the final stage. Uh, this is uh, it's common on all models like the world, world vector and the all other DNs. It requires uh, the vector dimension sh should be all the same. But in the uh, FM square, it actually doesn't require the field matrix to be the square matrix. We can adjust the output vector, that's the intermediate vector dimensions, by changing the shape of the field matrix. So this gave uh, us a flexibility to set the field specific length on demand in the embedding table. For example, in this diagram, we show that the original embedding VI for the feature I, its, uh, it's uh, dimension is five. So we can change its dimension to seven, that's the blue vector, or reduce its dimension to four, that's the purple vector. So we can use it for the dot products with the other feature like VJ and VK uh, at the same dimension. So we can, uh, with this method, we can reduce the uh, each Field, uh, each field's dimension, uh, vector dimension, as low as possible, but we can still keep the, the model's performance next accuracy. We propose two pass methods to optimize the dimension. Uh, at the first pass, we use a larger fixed embedding size to train the model. Then we can pull the embedding tables as a, as a matrix and utilize a standard PCA method to do the dimensional reduction. And in the experiment, we found that 95% original variance is a good trade-off between the performance and the speed. Uh, we will show the details in the experiment part. So. Uh, so we gave an uh, example of the data set creator. <clears throat> uh, this data set contains uh, 39 fields. We can see that the, at the second column, we show their uh, optimized dimension. The, uh, the range is huge from dimension from two to 14. So most of this dimension is lower than 10. That's is lower than all other factorization machines before setting, usually it's 10 or 15. Uh, so uh, for example, in the field 10, there are only uh, eight features. So we can use only three dimensions to represent these eight features. But in other, uh, for example, in the field 25, this field has 218, uh, 243 features, and it's used more dimensions, uh, for example, eight, to represent the, its information. Uh, the next uh, optimization method is the intermediate vector catch. Because FM square requires expensive matrix operation, operations in the step two, that's transformation. So we can, uh, we can catch this intermediate vector and let the FM square model transform to an FF model, actually. It's, it, this can reduce the number of operations at the same magnitude as FM and the FFM. So this table, oh, uh, another uh, trick is that we can combine this method with variable embedding dimensions, that's, which is, uh, I described in the last uh, slide. So we can choose to catch the intermediate vector which has lower field dimensions. It's beneficial because they have another, uh, because the model is symmetrical. Yeah, we have proof in our page, paper. So we, uh, this table shows that the model complexity in the, uh, the so the, for the original FF, FM square, it takes about uh, 400,000 uh, flops. Uh, it's estimated also on the critical data set. Uh, if we use the catch strategy, it will be reduced to 24,000 uh, flops for each inference. It's the, almost the same as FWFM and FFM. If we use the, uh, if you, we combine with the catch and the variable dimension reduction, 
it can be reduced uh, to about 9,000 flops to accomplish uh, uh, inference during runtime. It's uh, almost uh, one third of the cache and uh, maybe 5%, only 5% of original model. Uh, so the variable embedding also acted a rule similar to pruning because the traditional pruning gave the binary decision to keep or drop a, a feature or a feature pair. But uh, in the soft pruning, we determine the importance of each field and field pair on demand. So in the traditional pruning, when we drop a field pair, its signal was lost. Well, in the soft pruning, a field pair still keeps the major information with minimal cost. Uh, the, there are two heat maps. The upper one shows the, the field pair info, uh, Field pair uh, strange, strange with the label. Let's say the dot with the red dot is more informative in the uh, is uh, more predictive uh, in the model, while the white one is low predictive in the, uh, in the during the inference. Uh, the second one shows the catch size and the computational cost of each field pair uh, during the inference. So if uh, similar, if the dot with the right uh, with the red color, it costs more catch and the, comp comp uh, and the computation. Uh, flops during the inference, while the white one uses lower. So it's easy to find it's uh, highly related to each other, which means the model locates more parameters and more computational results to these higher strange field pairs, and use less parameter and less computation to these lower strange pairs. That's, that's it, the, the allocation on demand. So the last part, we want to sh show the experiment results on the model performance. Uh, the first part, we use a full-size model and uh, on the Critio and Awazo uh, data site. Which is the two famous sites and the popular in uh, all the papers. We follow the standard process and use 18% training, 10% validation, 10% uh, test. We observe their AOC and the log loss. Uh, so it's easy to find that the FM square model achieves the best performance among all these FM, uh, FM models family, while it's still comparable with the RSAM uh, DN models like the DeepFM, XDeepFM, but use much less uh, computation resources. So the second is the Wazum data side. Uh, the FM square model still gets the best performance during the FM, uh, FM model family and the similar uh, scenario when, when we compare with the DN, uh, DN models. Uh, the second experiment is to observe uh, the dimension reduction during the, uh, in the second part. So uh, in this experiment, we use the critical data side. Uh, we, run, we use the two pass method. The first pass, which have a full side model where the embedded dimension is 16. And uh, when we get to the full-size model, we use the PC method to optimize their field uh, specific embedding dimensions. Uh, we keep 99%, 97, 95, 19, 85, and 18% variance and observe how their model speed and model performance change. Uh, uh, so in this, uh, in this table, we found that the 95% is the best trade-off. Since, uh, since their AOC and log loss, there is almost nothing, uh, nothing drop on the AOC, and uh, there are no significant loss on the log loss. Uh, well, the, in, the average embedding dimensions is only about half of the original full size model. That means the model size is only half, where the flops is only one third of the original model, which means the model speed is three times faster than the full size model. So this diagram shows the model's performance in AOC and the model uh, speed in the flops, uh, which means the floating point operations. So our uh, FM square model set in the middle upper, that's the green one. So it's easy to find that it's a it's almost the best trade-off uh, among all these recommender algorithms on the models. Uh, it's, it takes uh, about four times uh, as the FM model, the original FM model, but has a much higher uh, AOC, that's more accuracy than the original F, uh, FM model. And it has uh, also uh, faster than FWFM and FFM, but uh, it uses less time in the inference. And uh, it's, it's uh, also faster than most of these uh, DNN models, and to get almost the, uh, the best performance except the deep light and the uh, deep and cross. So in conclusion, uh, we proposed a novel approach, FM squared, to model the interactions in the field pairs as a matrix. And we proposed a unified framework to understand the factorization machines better. We also proposed a few optimization uh, methods to make the FM, model, uh, FM squared model faster and also achieve the state of art performance on all shallow models. And uh, it's also comparable to this complexity uh, DN models. So there are three feature uh, work directions. One is to introduce nonlinear layers to the field interaction and let the model become a nonlinear model. The second is to introduce a 3D tensor and all those three field interaction in the model. Uh, the last one is uh, to add the FM square as a uh, building block to the DN models and further approve the performance. So uh, this is a question and answer time. So anyone have questions? <laughs>